Thanks, thanks, Manas. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to start with good morning and evening to lovely audience. And thanks to all the panelists to be part of this interesting panel and on, on one of my favorite discussion. Uh, I truly appreciate your valuable time. Over the next 30 minutes, we will discuss and highlight the key interesting aspects and the points related to change the game, winning the front line with AI. As, as Manas mentioned, AI is helping the organizations build new and improved capabilities for the growth that will enable them to have a leading position in the revamped competitive landscape in the new normal. As the IBM Watson experience shows, the path to AI success is filled with challenges. Yet overall, it has been a very good year for AI and the companies developing. So much so that Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai in a recent podcast said, I view AI as a very profound enabling technology. If you think about fire or electricity or the internet, it is like that, but I think even more profound. However, I know that a lot of challenges exist like inadequate infrastructure, the talent skills, and the lack of relevant accessibility and organized data that is helping many organizations back from fully realizing the potential of AI. So without divulging more on the facts and the insights from my end, I'll get into the discussion now and we'll start with Madhurima. Uh, thanks Madhurima for the time. Uh, and now. An important aspect is everyone talked about the COVID and the, the post pandemic. It is now in the past that COVID has fast tracked the adoption of AI across all the major verticals now. And with that, the role of AI has certainly unleveled as well. For example, earlier it was more of automating the manual data intensive processes, but now it is more on decisioning. So what are your thoughts on the same? A very valid point, Rajat. Today, organizations across a wide range of industries are leveraging AI to gain valuable insights from the large amount of data they generate. Right? Take, for example, you know, just round us, retail, automotive, healthcare, BFSI. In fact, the automotive sector has one of the most visible examples of where complex decision making is being done by the AI systems. When we talk about autonomous cars, right? That's that's just what it is. In retail, we see AI systems that are using facial recognition, analyzing your social media activity, etc. And based on that, companies are offering targeted offers to their consumers who are whether online or walk into a store. In industrial, we see AI it's being leveraged for a myriad of preventive maintenance use cases. Healthcare, right? In the world that we are living in, it's another sector where the power of AI is being harnessed. Now, whether it's accelerating drug discovery, medical imaging, or screening and diagnosis in clinical pathology, it is the decision-making power of AI systems that's at work here. If we look you know, all around us, conversational AI chatbots, they have touched all our lives in myriad ways, whether it is financial transactions that we are doing or whether it's a virtual medical advice that we are getting in today's time. So you see, these are, these are some very, very, uh, you know, powerful examples of how AI has just transcended and not doing repetitive tasks and stuff, but doing decision making, which is adding a lot of value to today's world. And, you know, I completely agree, as you said, Sundar Pichai said, it's an enabling system for us. right? And that's what we are seeing the various ways. And I can go on and on about the use cases, but I'll pause here. And you know, I, I think we've got a flavor of what it's doing to our lives. Sure, I think this is a valid point that it is uh, playing an important role across the industries. And the, the flavor of the decisioning is the next new norm that we see cutting across the industries, across the different value chains that we see. And Kishore, now coming to you, uh, now taking from that, now, what is your take on the democratization of AI. Uh, do you think in future we'll see more of buy or build models of AI adoption? How is this trend impacting the role of the skills and the talent? So it's, it's good to get your viewpoint on that. Yeah, uh, thanks Rajat, uh, pretty interesting question, right? Uh, if you look at democratization of AI, right? It's, it's not, democratization is not something that is isolated to AI. It's happening in pretty much every, field in technology, or even if you look at investments, right? There is democratization of investment, democratization of various technology pieces. Uh, people want to be building these citizen developers, right? And when you talk about AI, and uh, just as Madhurima was speaking about 
you know a lot of ai driven uh, solutions that are being developed across various industries uh, there is a need for agility right for firms to stay relevant and competitive and one of the ways that firms are looking to do that uh, is build this concept of democratization of ai what it means is to be able to provide access to citizen developers to data tools and framework which enables them to innovate in ai uh, which was long looked at as a, a complex field which needs scientists and ai researchers etc right now what are the trends that are shaping this up right the reasons are one obviously uh, you will you guys would speak much better than i can do is the the talent availability right it, it it is not easy to bring in talent who have the ai ml skills or data skills and so what companies like microsoft aws google they've all done is that they open sourced a lot of the fundamental machine learning algorithms and and the model building tools and the fact that most of our workloads are shifting to cloud the non ai workloads are shifting to cloud it only makes sense for us to consider ai also to be in the cloud right which is where uh, these cloud providers are building tools like auto ml uh, which is accelerating the you know adoption of ai in all the industries that madhurima touched upon so this is an interesting trend uh, we will start seeing more of this concept of democratization of ai happening but having said that i think uh, you know you 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 asked about whether you would see build, build or buy and i would think both would continue to exist and where you would see more of buy models is you know things like conversational ai right or things where uh, people like google and amazon and microsoft have done a lot of research uh, dealing with text related information right so things that leverage things like nlp or you know search things which are using a corpus of words and you know languages that we all speak in you know in in our, in our everyday lives right these are things that are you know common to everybody in the world and so you know potentially you could build solutions that leverage what is already being built by many of these big firms right you would still need to do some customization but that's an area where you would start seeing more of uh, Uh, by happening and this is also helping a lot of star- startups build solutions on this right on the other end if you are a financial services company or if you are a telecommunications giant and you have certain competitive proprietary data sitting with you uh, that you want to build a solution on top of it then you are better off doing a build approach right because you are not going to be able to get data sets publicly available for your models to be running uh, accurately and you also have to be cautious about the fact that when you buy models uh, there might be some bias uh, that that might have been introduced in, in what google as microsoft have done right where if, if google and microsoft have trained something for america would it make sense to use it for india given the cultural differences so these are some of the questions that people need to ask and that would really need bring up on the importance of having a good data scientist in your team who would ask all these questions right and moving on in in terms of you know your questions about the talent uh, that that one needs to look at i would say that the individual talent that you are going to look at is going to be continuous continuous to is going to remain the same right in terms of what you are looking for but how do you build a team now right a lot of times what we have seen as in the in the in the, in the firms uh, they almost have like you know they bring the horses before the cart right meaning you have an ai ml strategy before you even have a data strategy so the way i look at it is to be successful uh, today to build a good ai ml and data strategy is that you could potentially learn from these automobile manufacturers right where they have this modular platforms certain components are going to be specific for that particular model of the car and certain components are all modular right so what does that mean in terms of data engineering so you could potentially build a team where you have a data scientist who is going to be very specific to what you're building but you have a data engineer have a data visualization team you have an ml engineering team you have a de- devops team which could potentially be you know teams which can work across multiple use cases and they can be a common service that you can offer right so that's where i uh, th- i think you know democratization of ai is going to continue forward with this you have to ask yourself in which layer of your data strategy you would want to do democratization be it, is it visualization is it on model building so i'll stop at that uh, hopefully it's uh, it, it answered you question rajat sure sure just a follow up question kishore i think so as you mentioned the playbook 
one is the data strategy the other one is the talent and skills that we need to look at are there any other key elements that an enterprise has to look into when they're thinking of ai strategy yeah i think one of the most important things which which uh, any data scientist or a data team should look at is you know uh, you are now building solutions which are hyper personalized right most of your solutions are you are selling to a market size of one everybody wants the solution to be uh, you know solving their needs but at the same time you have to be respectful towards the privacy and confidentiality concerns so any data team i would suggest that you understand the data regulations quite well in terms of the 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 jurisdiction that you operate on data security and you have to start building responsibility ai and this is something that i think you know any data team should start understanding apart from you know how do you apply a model uh concerns about privacy and confidentiality is going to be quite important as we move to a digital world sure sure i think so you touched a very important point the responsibility and we can come to that uh in 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 the in a couple of minutes uh but vishal now coming to you uh, uh as i'm going deeper into the specific use case or the technology there has been a lot of acceleration of ai on edge during the last year because of remote manufacturing operations the emergence of the smart devices and the many other things uh and it's conquering the enterprise market with cutting edge application what is your organization strategy on the same do you see that uh it's one of the key emerging technology or the use case that we see in the ai so rajit first of all uh, thank you for having me on panel really exciting to be here uh so this is uh, this technology has existed right i'm glad that you used the word acceleration because everybody feels it is something new it's been there we have seen it in smart cars smart cities and such but i think what's propelling it is really the technology convergence right 5g coming in pushing lot of a uh, lot of compute to the edge then we have devices which are getting smart divider day right so there is lot more local computing power in, in it and and such and kishore also touched upon the point about data privacy right do you really want your data to be going over the wire or do you want to be process, uh, it to be processed locally so i think this entire mix coming together is really going to propel uh you know this um, this uh, ai on the edge forward think about it 2024 there're going to be 5 billion devices connected to the internet right so and 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 each of this getting smarter so one's got to really got to be uh, leveraging uh, their harness and their power so the the way i think ai on edge is here to stay 5g is going to be a, a big player in it smarter devices with higher compute lower power consumption is is going to be here and we have seen it make significant strides in manufacturing healthcare uh, wherever there are a lot of iot devices but one doesn't have one has to really take the financial services into account too because while it's not spoken there is a lot of lot of use cases that are being developed that are being used in the industry uh, as we speak right and before i go to the industry ones why don't i touch upon what what we are also doing right we are we, we are pretty invested in this space we believe that that there is there is significant amount of play cuz cuz uh, uh, if if you look at what we do we into banking financial services and and payments kind of space right and uh, specifically uh, if you look at frictionless uh, pay, payment I, th- i think this is a important one let me talk about a specific use case it's called uh, uh, alexa to pay and uh, so this is a use case that we've developed uh, for one of our uh, customers exxon gas so as a as a as a person drives into the gas station uh, to to fill uh, petrol or whatever be the uh, uh, petrol or diesel they just say hey alexa go to pay right and then alexa does the voice recognition it does its own thing uh, invokes us, uh, your geolocation and exactly specifies which pump you are at right and goes and enables that pump for for gas dispersion and and once you're done it identifies you're done and does frictionless payment so it's already in play it, there are exciting things happening uh, happening here uh, there's other example that i can think about is is you know atm video analytics most of the atm uh, uh, centers or, or kiosks across the world don't necessarily have a security guard like they have in india but they definitely have a camera which is focusing on the atm and the environment and and knowing what to what's happening there right now one of the use cases we thinking is about atm tampering or some untoward incidents happening in the atm kiosk itself right the the camera would be able to detect this movements which are out of pattern 
and uh, and uh, really be either shutting down the atm if there is tampering or and or uh, you know uh, uh, making a call to the law enforcement to say hey you know there's something going on so so right there somebody is acting on it right so these use cases are absolutely emerging some of these are already live some of these are uh, are uh, are going to be developed very soon and it's just i would also think the other area which would emerge is really ai on the edge with a hybrid form right so some would still be local computing some would still go back to cloud but uh, but let not being very puristic i'm just lumping it together and saying this is is an exciting field to uh, to watch out for from from multiple areas now some additional use cases uh, some you already seeing like you know uh, uh, think about a retail bank and you smile to pay your your camera just recognizes your feature and does does seamless payment absolutely without any intervention right or uh, if you are in the lending space right uh you you want to probably be interviewing the lender and uh, and 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 the the loan dispersion or or uh, whether the genuineness of the candidate is understood by micro expression right uh, whereby your camera is analyzing the features the expressions and and just as the the uh, the the dispersion of of the loan right and and finally i think the most important aspect uh, i'll uh, close with this is that cause there is compute happening where the data is being produced i think financial industry and many other industries healthcare and others are going to wake up to the fact that this is the way this is one of the way to look at uh, ensuring data security right so so i think it is um, it's a they couldn't have been a better time and and with everything going digital i think uh, i i think we're going to see really huge amount of of uh, use cases being developed in this space not in healthcare manufacturing uh, financial services you name the industry so very exciting space uh, to watch out for rajat and vishal uh, if you talk specific to what the financial services how do you see the use case of as you mentioned what the facial recognition of the computer vision or some mention about the atm theft and all that but anything on the customer experience uh, oh absolutely right i mean um, look at it uh, this way uh, and and this has been prevalent even in india not just us right earlier you got to you got to go to a bank and open your bank account today if you really see everything is on a video uh, key, video kyc right not better i i do my video kyc online i i, I do my registration online and boom i have a bank account working right there right so it is uh, it is quite seamless it it uh, it it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, it's non intrusive i don't have to go to bank kishor stopped uh, talked about uh, hyper personalization i think uh, i think that's also going to set in uh, into uh, as we think about ai on the edge right most importantly rajat i think this is also going to increase the speed of processing right because everything is happening locally you don't have to uh, wait for too long right i i don't have to look at my smart device going to the cloud or the data center trying to process the transaction and then then come back and and give me a give me a yes or a no it's going to happen locally right so so the the speed is also going to increase which is and and anybody who has used uh, any payment system and when when you see it getting slow you get a bit anxious right so uh, so it is as as the speed increases so is going to be the the customer experience so from multiple perspective right like frictionless product adoption uh, from the speed of adoption as well as uh, you know uh, understanding the, the 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 channels and the usage pattern increasing the security i think those are going to be big time as we think about uh, ai on the edge sure sure thanks now coming to shipro uh Uh, you're sitting in us but i'll ask a question about india market uh, we all know that uh, covid has led to accelerated adoption of ai among indian large enterprises also what change in sentiments do you witness in terms of enterprises now being more open and comfortable with adoption of ai can you name some of the areas where you see the witness maximum ai adoption which can happen in the coming one two years hey thank you thank you for having me on the panel so first of all uh to your question i started just to you know be- right before we got on to this panel i started to just look up what what is the context how much has been this increase what are we talking about right 
uh, what I realized is as of now, there are some 500 plus startups which have been funded by uh, various, obviously, venture capitalists and almost to the tune of $1 billion on these AI startups have been invested in the recent past, right? That's huge, right? So, and when I look at the kind of experience, the use cases we are solving, I think most of this investment uh, in Indian context is coming from digital banking. I think we've talked about it. Uh, uh, amid COVID, I think the cashless payments uh, increased significantly and this translated into many AI use cases and some of which already existed. It, it was just more, um, it furthered the cause of AI, yeah, right? So fraud detections, chat assistance, uh, RPA for uh, for automating some of your very monotonous and repeatable tasks. Uh, you'd be surprised at the number of conversational bots initiatives that big financial institutions have launched and funded in the recent past. So all that leads me to believe that uh, we'd continue to solve these interesting use cases in the in the digital banking space. The second one, equally exciting and equally chaotic at this point, uh, is what I'd call retail and e-commerce, right? So I think e Indian e-commerce is at the cusp of exploding, practically. And I think COVID played a big role. And while this phenomenon was not just... Um, was not just limited to India, and we, we saw it worldwide at large, but I think uh, I think in Indian context, the, the magnitude was much higher. So whether we are, whether we are employing NLP algorithms to understand customer sentiments, or we are standardizing the addresses, right? And we know how complex Indian uh, addresses can be. Or if even if, uh, you know, uh, let's say an Amazon recommender suggesting a customer on which size to buy, right? So think Amazon, Flipkart. I think these are all very, very high-end AI use cases. And the more the more we are interacting with all these e-commerce platforms, the more AI it needs, the more data it generates, the more AI is needed to tackle that data and then make some sense out of it. So I think I think it's a highly, highly exciting and uh, very well washed out space uh, when it comes to uh, AI and uh, retail and e-commerce platforms. The third one, um, where I also see a lot of traction as we as we are solving problems are marketplaces, right? So think Uber, think OLX, even to the extent of maybe social, some of the social media apps. Now, one wonders where is AI and all that, but AI is so embedded into these that, you know, right from the time when you're ordering an Uber to the point where it says, hey, there's some traffic, there's delay, and your uh, you know expected ETA is kind of revised to maybe 20 minutes more or uh, X, Y, Z, right? So I think we have seen the success of such kind of marketplaces in India, uh, uh, which is a which is which is where it's practically growing, and we have seen that success already. I also think that uh, the services consumption mindset is going to fuel it further, right? So people now have a taste of what it takes to order a cab, uh, the convenience of ordering a cab on your mobile devices. And I think somebody talked about some 8 million or maybe more, 8 billion or more, more mobile devices, right, in the market. So think think when uh, that convenience meets the volume that we are talking about in India. And I think that will immediately again push the whole cause of AI when it comes to to address the rising concerns specifically related to the identification of the right use case or the awareness of the right use case, the ROI measurement or the ethical concerns and so on. So it would be good to hear from you. Yeah. So there are two parts to your question, Rajat, right? And the second uh, question gives me the answer to the first, which is, you know, the ethical concerns, the data privacy concerns. You know? These are things that we are all facing, the challenges. I think uh, with AI, right, the process of operationalizing AI which requires massive amounts of data that have to flow unhindered, right, through a five-stage pipeline, right, from ingest to archive. Now, this is a big challenge today because of the massive amount of data that is being produced. How do you ensure, you know, we've touched upon this earlier, how do you ensure that data security is there? Data privacy is a whole different thing, but data security is the enterprise's responsibility, right? Uh, how do you ensure that the speed 
uh, and Vishal had uh, alluded to it. How do you ensure that the speed is maintained, right? Because all of these uh, enterprises that today are looking at embracing these AI technologies, the data challenges, how do you move it from edge to core to cloud? Right? These, these are all very practical challenges that are being faced today. And of course, the bigger questions, right? The ethics decisions. When companies are building their AI models, how are they ensuring that there is diversity in the data that is collected, right? 50% of the world's inhab inhabitants are women. Whereas when you look at the data models, they do not really capture that somewhere because it's being trained on data that is very biased. So all these are challenges that are being faced today by enterprises. Now, how do we solve for that, right? Now at, at, at NetApp, we are trying to do this for ourselves and for the ecosystem as well. So in terms of the tactical things like the solutions which take care of this uh, data congestion and the speed and all, NetApp has delivered AI solutions that remove these bottlenecks at the edge core and cloud to enable more efficient data collection, accelerated AI workloads and smoother cloud integration. So that, that part is taken care of and, and we, you know, share it uh, with the world to make use of these technologies. What we are also doing is supporting the development of the AI ecosystem through our AI Center of Excellence and Accelerator program. Shipra talked about, you know, the $1 billion of funding that has gone into these AI startups. Now, they're very small. How do you ensure that they can scale up? How do you ensure that they are making the right decision, building the models which are keeping in mind the challenges that we talked about uh, just earlier, right? So NetApp, as part of NetApp Accelerator Program, we offer mentorship, we offer access to hardware to the startups who want to test their offerings. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are some of the efforts that we are doing as a company to help the whole ecosystem grow. Because I think in the world that we live in, we're all digitally connected, right? So what happens in one place affects the world at large. So that that's uh, some of the ways in which we are uh, taking care of these challenges for ourselves and for the rest. Great, great to know that. And I think so as you and Shikha both touched about the funding, the $1 billion funding, we show the next question to you is something related to that. So 2020 saw the VCs pouring the huge amount of money into automating core banking processes such as customer onboarding, lending, trade finance, and so on. What has been your efforts on that front? Uh, how you see that? And do you believe that these to be the long-term opportunities or the dust will settle down once we finally move out of the pandemic? Yeah, uh, so uh, Rajat, great question. And the, and the short answer is uh, yes, it's going to be a long-term strategy for most companies, right? Especially if you look at the financial services and Shipra touched upon this uh, digital banking. Um, before we I talk about what we are doing, I, I just want uh, everybody to look at what ICICI is doing, right? And it will be an interesting case study to look at how many folks have shifted their banking to ICICI during the COVID uh, with all the video KYC and the complete digital experience, right? So in my view, uh, a lot of these things like, you know, onboarding, customer onboarding, lending, et cetera, they maybe look, you can look at them as incremental innovation, right? Not necessarily like a big needle mover. But if you don't do that today, you're going to be not able to retain your customers. You're not going to be able to understand your customers. You're not going to be able to have the data around the customers on which you build a future business opportunity, right? So uh, you may not win today with all these efforts, but you may lose your business. So that's how we look at it. And what we've been doing is, uh, uh, as, as I mean, like just for the, uh, you know, as you might be aware, Broadridge is a leading provider of uh, investment banking services and wealth management, et cetera, right? So uh, one of the most important things and, and with the demographics shifting towards this, you know, Gen Z and the, and the millennials, they want a complete digital experience, right? So if you're going to tell that, you know, your customer onboarding process is going to take five days, that's not a good experience. So what we've been doing is, you know, making it much easier for people, for our clients to help their clients open their accounts faster. Uh, so we've been investing a lot on document processing because financial services, and I'm, I'm sure it is same in most industries, a lot of text and document processing is still how the industry operates, right? How do we make that easier? So how do we intelligently automate them? 
using intelligent document processing? How do you make insights out of the data? How do you make it much easier, right? As an example, in, in our digital transformation, one of the one of the things, it's just, it's probably a small thing, but one of the things that we are doing is, today, if you even download an app from uh, Apple or Google, uh, there's this 18, 20 page agreement document, which most of us have never read, right? You're, you're not even sure like what you're signing up for. Imagine the kind of agreement documents that you're signing for the financial services form, right? Uh, so one of the things that we are doing is like, how do you extract information that is the most important and meaningful for the customer to understand, right? And that could be done something using natural language processing. So these are, this is an example of what we could do uh, when we look at, you know, customer onboarding, make it much more seamless. And when you extend it to other things like lending and uh, trade finance, et cetera, you know, there's a lot of data out there which need to be, you know, uh, harvested. And and again, uh, with, with, you know, responsible and ethical processes and make sure that, you know, we're able to provide the, the customer experience that everybody is seeking for today, right? So I would say that in the long run, it is going to be very, very relevant and very important that firms continue to invest in this. Great. No, I think so. A lot of interesting and thanks for highlighting with the ICIC Bank case study. <laughs> That's an interesting one. So we shall now coming to you again on the financial side. The digitization has revolutionized financial services. According to you, how AI is creating a new kind of financial impacts? Yeah. Um, again, now, uh, Personally, very interesting space, and, and uh, you know, have, being in now uh, in Pfizer, which is leading the kind of path on this one, it makes it uh, uh, super exciting. There is there is a significant amount of uh, of uh, thought process and mind share on this front, right now. With with the whole COVID, uh, it's really really propelled uh, the everybody to get into the into the digital world, right, and. Uh, and 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 more and more uh, uh, more and more customers are getting multi-channel, right? While uh, I, th I think Kishore did did allude to it in some way, saying, "Is everybody going to go digital, or is branches going to be there?" Through his example, uh, you know, we we will we will try and, and develop more insights into the customer, right? Having a three sixty degree to of the customer, both in terms of his his payment transactions, in terms of the credits in terms of understanding the banking pattern has become more important than ever before, right? Because because that's really uh, that's really where you get to know the customer, right? And um, I think Kishore did mention saying it's a it's a market of one. So if you have to address the hyper personalization aspect, uh, digitization of uh, of data uh, using it ethically, like Ma Madhurima mentioned. Uh, is going to be important yet we uh, read, uh, uh, meet the goal of, of hyper personalization and we're going to see products which are going to be very specific for a rajat or a shipra or somebody right because taking into their their situation into account and and what's going on the other area where we've we've seen huge amount of uptick is around uh, uh, digital analytics right uh, as as customers go through their flows uh, to understand what patterns are working well, which 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 devices, which customer flows are working, what is breaking, and then then providing that uh, that feedback back to your uh, to a UI UX teams or your your product teams to say what is working and what's not. We've seen uh, we've seen a um, lot of data being collected. Similarly, data would be collected from the from the devices that are going to be there. To understand which of these channels are are going to be working or not, so I, I think the the whole space around digital analytics and also analytics of of data that we're going to be receiving from the IoT space is is going to really feed into um, feed into this aspect of understanding the customer better, segmenting the customers, providing them uh, providing them products and services. Or even for that matter, how do you service the customer uh, from from understanding their emotional state today? Right uh, today, we we do with the use of video, with the use of uh, uh, of, of uh, conversational bots, we'll be able to sense what they're going through in the in their mental state and and provide and adjust uh, uh, adjust what we are doing accordingly. Right, whether the person this is a good time to market, is it a better time to service the customer, and so on and so forth. So I, I think. The the generate I mean the data being generated 
uh, folks going to be uh, more digital is is really going to cause AI to be coming in and and doing a lot of stuff towards uh, towards uh, meeting all meeting most of the customer requirements and and also the behavior patterns. Right, there is always a a new generation which is coming in. I mean, born digital to born mobile to born whatever next. Right. So how do you how do you really uh, uh, really create products which are meant for them. I mean, we have seen the traditional products being used in in enterprise like robo advisory and such, but still they are mass products. I think where we're going to see is really personalized product going uh, going in front. Now, with all this excitement, right, Rajat, one should not understand what's also being caused, right? Uh, just a, a side word of caution is really around the fraud and the cyber security space, right? Uh, it is it is. Uh, uh, it, the customer is becoming more. Uh, uh, how do I say? The touch points of the customers are, are are becoming very different, and I think the systems also need to be to be built to make sure uh, that that they are managing this well. Like if you look at, at fraud management, right? Are we taking uh, the user's device, their IP addresses, the location where they are uh, they are logging in from, and also uh, their intrinsic behavior, right? The first few have already been used, but the intrinsic behavior is something that that we are actively looking at, whether the customer is hesitant, they are distracted, or whether their typing patterns is different and so on and so forth. So these kind of go back and, and play into how things are happening. And and uh, we are right there. Uh, we, have, we, do, we, are, uh, we have had a use case of, of KYC using generative adversarial network. You've seen sure. significant amount of uptake in the in the frictionless payment space. Too. So Great. exciting world. No, I think so. It's very exciting world. Uh, and and Shipman, now coming to very specific domain. Uh, every enterprise mission is to build intelligent, transparent supply chain. Uh, I think so. You touched upon that point also. To do so, the cutting edge technologies, including AI, uh, is playing an important role. It will be interesting to know uh, what are the outcomes of the results that enterprises are able to achieve or AI or how the future looks like. Sure, sure. I'm glad. I'm glad you asked me about supply chain. I'm, we are quite passionate about it. So, so at Bristlecone, uh, we are very excited with the prospects of what AI can do for supply chain, right? I, I think the bigger theme that is kind of playing right now everywhere and including India is, is it's just in one word, it's visibility, right? I mean, data visibility, inventory visibility, demand visibility, and and leading the pack is uh, what we call a supplier visibility. I mean, any organization would have given million bucks to know where the spare inventory was during and after COVID, right? So I think right. everybody felt it, a, a, a very very acutely felt it. So I think, so I think I don't have to go at, to lens to explain what visibility can do and what is the outcome. I mean, it could mean different things. It could mean on-time delivery for your logistics, uh, for a logistics function. It could mean cheaper raw materials for procurement. It could mean uh, really accurate forecasts for your demand planners, right? It could mean right inventory at the right place for the right, everything right for yeah. an inventory specialist, right? So yes, I mean, at Bristlecone, we are betting huge on this. And I think uh, I, I'll, I think at this point I'm, I'm I'm quite sure that uh, the kind of benefits that it would accrue, I think this is just the time for uh, for those conversations to come to the boardroom, right? Or those conversations to 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 um, to bubble up and say, hey, what are we going to do about visibility? Be it, be it any kinds. Oh, good to good to know that, Shapra. I think so. The future is that everyone is talking about the intelligent related use cases, and definitely it applies in the supply chain also. I wish I could continue the discussion and I'm sure that with the way and the, the technologies and the processes we are talking about, we can continue for the next couple of hours. But uh, in the interest of time, I have to stop over here. Thank you so much for all your valuable, uh, appreciate your time for this discussion and the insightful discussion and the thoughts. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for bringing your perspective on this panel discussion. Thank you and have a great day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all.